Joining me now is the Shadow Finance Minister, Jane Hume. Jane, thanks so much for your time. What is so clear to me at the moment is that, yes, inflation is high, and one of the issues that the government does actually have control over is migration and skill shortage. If we've had so much migration, hundreds of thousands of people in the last 12 months or so, and we've still got a skill shortage, there's a problem there, isn't there? It's not matching up. There's... There is a fundamental problem because, of course, those huge numbers of, of migrants put immense demand on our already congested suburbs, on our already overworked infrastructure. And unless there is infrastructure that has been coordinated to keep up with that level of inflation, it actually becomes a drag on productivity rather than an enhancement to productivity. You know, Philip Lowe was the first to point out that wage rises without productivity are inflationary. And while we hadn't got there yet, we're now hearing Michelle Bullock reiterate that point of the previous RBA governor. And, uh, and in fact, we've seen productivity tank under the last 15 months, under this government the last 15 months, by about 6.6%. Yet at the same time, we've had uh, nominal wages growth that's been a record in, uh, in you know, higher nominal wages growth than in the last 14 years. Still not real wages growth, I might add, because inflation is still high. But that nominal wages growth does seem to be really big compared to uh, the, the productivity needed to make sure that that's not inflationary. That will, of course, be of a concern to the RBA. They've already flagged that. Yeah, they have. Um, there's some things that are outside of this government's control and there's still a lot of overseas influences on inflation, if I can put it that way. But migration is this the number one issue, surely. What is the opposition proposing the government should do about this? Because if there's still a massive skill shortage in construction, for example, uh, we've got all these uh, projects that need to be built, but we're still not getting the skills... Uh, and the skilled workers in, something's wrong with the way we are taking uh, the, the intake of migrants, surely? Yeah, something is fundamentally wrong here. Even the Jobs and Skills Summit, which demanded uh, an increase in migration in order to fill those skill gaps, had nothing like half a million. In fact, it was less than half of that that they were that they were requiring. Uh, and yet it does seem that this number has gone completely out of the government's control, that they have somehow, uh, you know, not had their eye on the ball and, so, and, and so been so looking... Sorry to interrupt, on, Jane. On I, I hate things. doing this, but is it the number you have a problem with? Should it be lower? Well, it's the number without the capacity. It's the number without the capacity to absorb it and to make sure that they are, in fact, adding to productivity rather than detracting from productivity. Uh, that's really the concern. Look, uh, let me be very clear. A well-managed migration program has been one of the foundations underpinning economic growth and prosperity in our country for decades. But the key there is well managed and with half a million people coming into our country, uh, congesting our already overburdened suburbs uh, without the, the, you know, mm. the corresponding infrastructure to support them, well, that clearly is a migration program well, what that does well is managed mean? out let's, of control. Let's try and get down to this. What does well managed mean? Are you saying what I've suggested at the start, that the, the intake is not matching the skill shortage? We've got um, certainly migrants putting a lot of pressure on rents on home ownership, we can see that in housing prices, but yet companies, big and small, are still reporting massive skill shortages. That's exactly right. And without uh, you know, a matching system so that the, the, uh, that the migrants that are coming in are yeah. filling those skill shortages, we're going to continue to go backwards. And in fact, we're already in that per capita recession. If it wasn't for those enormous migration numbers, we would in fact be an economy in recession right now on this government's watch, and that's a real concern. We would like to see product, a productivity agenda put in by this government, something that lowers the prices of, of electricity, for instance, a significant input into productivity growth, uh, rather than putting ideology ahead of a lower, uh, a lower energy price agenda. We would like to see competition improved, red tape reduction, lower taxes, all of these things improve productivity. But most important, and right on the government's agenda right now, 
is making industrial relations simpler rather than more complicated, allowing people to employ more people rather than detracting them from doing so. Uh, okay. That is well within the government's remit today, and yet it has persisted with its ideological industrial relations agenda that is actually going to detract further from productivity. Without that productivity, yeah. we cannot have wage rises without it fueling inflation. All right, Jane, thanks so much for that.